so i think we are done with the electrostatics almost completely and today we are going to begin a very new chapter a fresh chapter which is you can say continuation of the previous one and here we are going to introduce some new variables some new definitions but the base remains the same it is all about charge it is all about field and it is all about something related to charge and field but in a very different package so we are going to name it differently uh, treat it differently so it is just like you have bread you have the some uh, slices of uh, uh, onion tomato turnip and you put beneath uh, you know between two bread slice and you call it sandwich so basically sandwich is not the base i mean it's a just name similarly the capacitor is something similar to that you bring the charge you bring the field and then you make some arrangement between the two plates and you call it a capacitor you just name it now of course when we design something like this uh, we must have some uh, uh requirement or need in the past and uh, we'll see through the the real life application of capacitor and how it governs almost everything on this planet right now so even i'm talking to you thanks to the capacitor okay so without that capacitor i cannot talk also uh so we all are like you know kind of trapped within the capacitor okay outside also capacitor inside also capacitor and the biggest capacitor which you don't know is your heart so your human heart is a biggest capacitor in fact it's a biggest dipole also because by default every capacitor is a dipole because whenever we have plus charge and minus charge we have dipole okay so every capacitor itself is a dipole your heart is a biggest dipole your heart is a biggest capacitor and in fact heart is so powerful in terms of uh, <clears throat> charging creating ability that uh, it's the charge which is developed over the arteries of the heart which is able to let it contract or expand so contraction is basically attraction and expansion is like a repulsion okay so how the heart knows it has to beat the way it is beating right now so the simple logic is it is the charge which is governing this uh, beating process and of course the brain is controlling that charge flow okay so uh the brain will decide that uh, which part of the heart will have positive charge which will have negative charge and that is how it will create the contraction and the expansion the repulsion and attraction and that is how we uh create the motor activity so in fact in the human body the muscles creates the motor uh, action motor means the motion actually so the motor action is because of the charge only so a different deposition of charge in different uh, cells uh, creates kind of repulsion and that's how you are able to move your hands so if you are able to move your finger shrink the finger make a fist and then reopen it it is entirely governed by the charge nothing else i mean you think that it's natural but it's it is, it is uh, the underlying law is again law of physics so how the world is you know depending on this capacitor stuff so let's say when we talk about the memory so memory is nothing but the uh we have a chip in which we create the infinite number of capacitors and of course resistors by default and these capacitors store charge actually so by creating a discrete uh, plates uh, by scratching using the laser we create infinite i mean you can say millions and millions of tiny capacitor which you cannot see through of course it's uh, so tiny uh, electrically it is used it is all done by computer simulation you cannot do it physically and the place where these chips are designed are called the cleanest place on universe that is the cleanest place which means the number of air molecule concentration is countable that's kind of vacuum they create in the intel chip manufacturing uh you can say uh plant actually okay. so how it works so every charge is a potential and potential we read actually a high potential we call uh, a binary one and low potential we call a binary zero so by putting a different charge which creates different level of potential we actually extract <clears throat> information in terms of binary one and zero and that is why every information which we process is eventually converted in a machine as a zero and one so whatever you see all the hardware's only work with the potential 
and the charge, which we kind of map as a one and zero. <coughs> and then collection of one and zero, we map as a different language, different alphabet, different character. And from the different character and different color, we create the entire thing in a reverse fashion. So there are a lot of layers, which goes from one side to the other side and vice versa. The same thing is with uh, transmission also. So if I'm saying something, then I'm creating a pressure wave. The pressure wave is uh, oscillating the microphone. The microphone is uh, converting this pressure wave into electrical signal. The signal is I mean, going to the transmitter part. The transmitter is uh, getting superimposed with the carrier wave. The carrier wave is retransmitted by the machine. The It goes to the nearest Wi-Fi router. The router will retransmit to the the cable, the cable will transmit to the operator, the operator will retransmit into the air, the, it will take it to the other location of the world. And then you again receive those signals. So see this entire instantaneous process, uh, which you believe is, is instantaneous is not instantaneous. The only thing is our brain is slow. So for us, anything which is processed within a fraction of second, let's say one by 10 seconds to be precise, we cannot understand what has happened. And the calculation which I talked about happens at a nanosecond scale. So by the time brain is able to understand something, the nanosecond is too small to process everything from what I said to what had happened. And all this thing happens in microsecond duration. So in a microsecond duration, the information will be thrown from the transmitter end and will be received on the receiver end and your brain will think that it's instantaneous so capacitor is everywhere so when we when you press the keyboard the keyboard is nothing but a capacitor and every press is like you, you press the plate of capacitor which is kind of changes the charge which it can creates the current which is received as a signal so I can keep on giving the examples of capacitor. It is everywhere. So I, as I said, the human body itself is a uh, collection of cell and every cell with charge is a capacitor. So you can think that we all are capacitor. It's a just way of saying it. So we all are made of cell and cell will have charge. We have the sodium ion, we have uh, chlorine ion, uh, we have potassium ion, okay. And these ions will be covering the layer of the cell and some charge is inside so generally the the cations are inside the cell and the anions are outside the cell the reason is cations are smaller than anions so the smaller part will penetrate through the cell will go inside the anions are bigger so inside than the cell dimension i mean the pores of the cell they remain outside and with the difference of the plus and minus uh, they create a capital like uh, structure due to some anomaly some of the charge will you know penetrate through each other and they will create a non-equilibrium of charge which is like a, they will create a non-zero charge and that will create a non-zero potential and the potential develop at cellular level which is maybe in a nanovolt or maybe less than that or picovolt so that is cellular level potential let all cell to interact and that is how the entire human body is able to create up to millivolt of potential. So you're not chargeless body. The body is quite having a, quite a good uh, uh, potential. And that potential is exactly we measure in the uh, diagnosis called ECG, the electrocardiogram. Cardiogram is the heart graph, gram means graph. And electrocardiogram means we, what we do is we receive, we put the electrode, which are the uh, sensitive, or you can say potential detectors, you can say. So we put the electrode uh, across the body, close to heart, and then on the arm, right arm, left arm, your foot, near everywhere. And we collect the potential from every part of the body. And after collecting the potential, what we do is we plot the average value of all potential. So the entire average value is plotted and then you see something really nice like, okay, it's like, okay, so you're alive huh? and this is, okay, you're dead. So this potential will spike, will show down 
and there are three processes of life and death. So a body is said to be alive if it undergoes three processes. The process is called polarization of cell, depolarization of cell, and the repolarization of cell. So every cell undergoes this cycle of polarization, uh, depolarization, and repolarization. And as long as the body is able to produce this cycle, uh, the body is said to be alive. Otherwise, we are called dead. Okay. So if you have I mean, seen or heard about that, when you cut the, the tail of a, a lizard or any insect, the tail will actually move up to quite a good time, you know, maybe up to five minutes to keep on moving. So it is not alive. It is because the charging and discharging process is creating the contraction and repulsion. So it looks like the, the tail is having the life. Okay. The whole idea of life is movement and the idea of movement is charge. And because of the very random nature of discharge of the charge in the cell of the tail of the lizard, okay, things will happen. Okay. So when I saw this first time, uh, the moving tail of a you know, tail of the lizard separately. The tail is separate and the, the lizard is separate. Still, the tail is moving. I got very scared. After a long, long time after learning the, the electrocardiogram in my BTEC third year, I came across, okay, it is a charge which, uh, you know, eventually controls all motor cell movement. Okay. So fundamentally, everything is like this one. I mean, at cell level, uh, like how we understand how the virus work okay so virus is also a collection of molecule and a virus is a collection of molecule with different charge uh, location and they attack where the stability is obtained okay? so that's why they are very deadly because they attack those cells which are supposed to be you know isolated from any uh, reaction so everything is all about reaction the reaction is all about the rearrangement of the, of the bonds and you create some uh, NT, but then the body will try to create antibody. Uh, there are many, many layers. So there are two ways of learning or understanding this uh, disease. One is the in terms of physics, and of course you see at uh, the biological level, and the third is of course uh, at a scale of called uh, the statistical nature of the disease, like how it is spreading, where in which part of the world it is spreading more. What kind of people is getting infected easily? What age group is getting infected? And there are so many things. Anyway, so we are trying to understand the idea of uh, capacitor. So during the, the, you can say, when the heart is stopped beating, okay, so the heart is stopped beating because somehow it got discharged. Okay. And to recreate that charge, there's a need of something called electrical shock. So we use something called defibrillator and the defibrillator will have two plates and what we do is we give a very huge current we flow let the large current flow through the body but in a very small duration as small as fraction of millisecond so to achieve that we need to store charge on the plates and uh, by discharging so the moment they touch the two plates on the body the charge from one plate will move through the human heart, lung and the heart part and will go to the other plate because the field lines are there. Okay. You can see that, okay, we have the two plates. So one is positive charge. So we have the field lines like this, okay. permitting like this. So when you touch the human body, the, these field lines will go through and we have the heart somewhere there. So this is the hard part. And this field lines will somehow recreate the charging of the heart. And once it, the charge will create, it will automatically try to start the beating process. And once the heart beats, okay, you are again safe. Okay. Now, this kind of current, which is very huge current, we cannot achieve through the typical method of uh, battery and uh, the register. Because in the battery and the register case, we can get up to few amperes. We cannot get, let's say, 100 of amperes or 200 of amperes or 300 of amperes. So to get that huge current in a short duration, we use the discharging process of capacitor plate. And the current is basically the rate of flow of charge. 
So even though I can make DQ very small, but if I make DT even smaller, I can create a huge current. So you can create a huge current with almost little charge, almost little as it is as uh, nanocoulomb or millicoulomb, microcoulomb. So even with a microcoulomb charge, we are capable of creating thousands of ampere of current. The only rule is make DT as small as possible. And that actually happens in case of capacitor. The discharging happens so fast that it creates tremendous current. And uh, that current will, because it will exist for a very small fraction of time, it will not damage much of the part. It will only damage, affect the, the desired location. And that is how it is designed. Actually. Okay. So one of the plate is kept above the heart, another plate is kept slightly left. And once it discharges, the charge flows in that way. And that is how you give the electrical shock. Okay, anyway. So the other application is your flash camera. Okay, so in the mobile phone, we have the flash. And how the flash work? The flash requires a tremendous current to create the light. Okay. And to create a very huge current, again, uh, our mobile phone will not have the 220 volt battery. What battery we use? Five volt lithium ion battery, right? Yes. Imagine using a five volt lithium ion battery, you're creating a halogen kind of light, okay? Which requires traditionally a huge current. So what we do is behind every flash, there is a capacitor. And the five volt lithium ion battery is sufficient to charge that capacitor. So we put something, let's say two micro coulomb of charge. And that two micro coulomb of charge is discharged in almost one nanosecond. So let's say if two micro coulomb is discharged in one nanosecond, or let's say even uh, 10 nanoseconds, let's keep it slightly bigger. It is two by 10 into micro is minus six and nano is plus nine. It is one by five, or you can say 0.2. 10 power 3, which is roughly 200 amperes. Do you realize this? With a tiny amount of charge, and by discharging the same charge in a, that much time, we create a huge current of 200 amperes inside the flash. And that is how the flash is generated. The huge uh, burst of light is given to. And you click the image in that small duration, that is good enough. So it is synchronized. That's, the moment you click, everything is activated and you get a image in the bright light, which goes off in no time. Okay. So that is also one application of capacitor. So there are many applications, the entire microprocessor, the motherboard, the chip, everything is made of capacitors. And uh, most of the computer peripherals are capacitors. And because it is the building block of any circuit, so we cannot think of the world without capacitors. Again, capacitor is a name only. The base is again the same. The base remains the field and the charge or charge and the field. Okay. So we will try to understand the entire thing in terms of charge and field. Our process will, uh, or method of uh, explanation will remain same as in terms of electrostatic behavior. And later on we'll convert or try to create a new way of dealing with it in terms of capacitance. Okay. So first of all, if I ask you, or if someone asks me, what is capacitor? There are many definitions, but we will go for the definition as a device. So first of all, the capacitor was developed for the purpose of uh, this, uh, the fibrillator, you know, what I said. And so we wanted to, you know, kind of store energy. Because if charge creates field, the field is the energy. So in a way, every charge creates field, which in turn creates energy. So we wanted to store a finite amount of energy in a finite space. Okay. And to keep the energy finite in a finite space, we made two plate capacitor idea. Because by creating the two plate, we make sure that the fields are, the fields are between the plates and therefore, it is kind of confined. Okay. So what we say, it is a device. It is a device. 
which is used to store energy. So it is a device which is used to store energy in form of electric field. So that is the sole purpose of capacitor. So who are capacitors? So I can say anyone with the ability to store charge are capacitor, that's simple. So anything which can store charge can act as capacitor because the word capacitor has come from the word capacity. Like what are, how much capable they are in terms of storing charge. Now, charge storing is not an easy process because the moment you give someone some charge, and if you try to give it further, the charge which you have already given will start repelling the new incoming charges. And therefore, every time you put try to put a DQ charge over the charge Q, you need to perform some work, which we have done already in the if you remember the self energy calculation, I hope you remember. Yes. In which uh, we had a sphere, we gave some charge and we were trying to give more and more charge. Basically, the entire idea of self energy, we can recreate in capacitor again. And I will show you that you can solve many questions of capacitor in terms of just energy and vice versa. Okay. So it's just a mathematical tool actually. Or uh, uh, by calling it as capacitor, we can create a circuit kind of arrangement. And that is how, I mean, that is why we have uh, this chapter itself in place because we wanted to uh, make a circuit with such able elements which can store charge. Okay. So, so far you might have heard about the circuits with the register and battery, but now we wanted to have a circuit in which we not just have the register and battery, but some charge storing element as well, or you can say, energy storing element as well part of a circuit and so the idea of capacitor brought into life and uh, it makes the entire analysis very very easy compared to if i go with the scratch method so that is kind of uh, the same the bread is same the stuffing is same the only difference is we are going to call it sandwich So anything which can store charge can act as capacitor. Capacitor doesn't come in a particular shape. Of course, we do create for our own convenience. It does not mean that capacitor will only have those looks which you permit. Okay? Any look is capacitor. So if I just randomly draw any shape, and if it can store some charge, I can say this is capacitor. This is the conductor of some random shape. This is a capacitor. Okay. I can create capacitor like this by making two plates. Okay. So you can create a yin yang capacitor. I mean, just create whatever you want. So there is nothing to do with the shape of capacitor. Capacitor is just a concept. And of course, we do uh, create a, a very nice looking shape some nice geometrical thing. It is because we can only do the mathematical manipulation under some symmetric condition. And so we try to derive those symmetric conditions so that we can apply the mathematical laws of physics and derive certain properties. That is the whole idea. So the first thing is, what is capacitance of a capacitor? Next is the capacitance of so as i said it is the charge storing ability so basically charge storing ability of a object is called its capacitance 
another question is how to compare the ability of two conductors let's say we have two conductors and we want to know which one is having more i mean ability than the other so we would like to understand the okay capacitor can be made of anything but we only take conductors okay so we always keep or take conductors because of the reason that uh, we do not want the field to be spread everywhere conductors are very good with uh, preventing the lines of force if you remember the uh, field lines concept yes sir so the lines of force cannot conduct through the or pass through the metals okay. and the whole idea is to confine the energy confine the field so we use conductor but uh, technically speaking i can create conductor with uh, capacitor with anything but the problem is if you create with non conductor at time of use you will not be able to conduct because it will not let it go understood so only conductor can conduct so logically we always create a capacitor with conductor always So theoretically, no one can stop me by for creating apple uh, peel. Mm -hmm. I can create an apple peel. I will charge the apple peel. I will say, okay, this is my conductor. I will take a star of form. I will charge the star of form. I will say, this is my conductor. You potentially cannot stop me while creating what I am doing. I can take a hollow shell made of uh, the peel of watermelon, and I will charge it. That is my potentially capacitor. But when it comes to conduction, it will be of no use. So theoretically, I can create a capacitor with any object, any material. But practically, what we do is important, and we always create using the metals. Okay. The next concept is what is capacitance of a capacitor which we denote by C. So if I give you multiple conductors of random shape, and you want to know that who is having more capacity than other, how we are going to compare? So technically, every conductor can take infinite charge. Technically means theoretically. Then how are you going to compare in three infinity? The answer is we never compare the infinity. Okay. So we compare something finite object. So what we do is we impart charge to every conductor. Now, now the one which will repel most will have less capacity or more capacity. More capacity. So it is repelling means it is not trying to consume charge. No? Okay. If repulsion is maximum, it means it is trying to kind of oppose the incoming charge. Ah oh, yes. So if you are trying to oppose it, so your capacity is compared to. Low. Low. So let's see if I'm offering you one extra butter masala dosa, and you're saying no, I won't take. So there are three guys who are eating masala dosa, and I'm offering one extra masala dosa to all. 
and you say no i will not take even, even a single bite if someone says no i can take half of it someone says no i can take the full so whose capacity is more the one who accepts all the one who rejects all accepts all accepts all that's logical thing similarly <clears throat> i'm offering you charge q but i'll see your tendency to oppose and how we are going to measure the opposition if you remember electrostatics what is the way to understand that who is going to oppose more less how we quantitatively understand the repulsion part we check the potential i hope you don't remember. we check the because whenever you give charge to any conductor its potential will rise right uh, yes sir so let's say the first conductor will rise potential uh, will take i mean its potential will rise by v1 the second one so rises by v2 and the third one rises by v3 so whose capacity will be more the one with the highest potential or lowest potential so one with the lowest potential that's logical so we can say that capacitance of a capacitor is logically inversely proportional to the rise in potential or you can capital v i am writing delta with the potential difference isn't it can we say like this yeah. yes so that is the whole idea that capacitance is logically inversely proportional to rise in potential when you give some charge so the way we define is <clears throat> okay the way this is like logical idea okay this should be like this so the way we define is let's say if i want to raise every conductor potential by 1 volt so i want to okay let's say it's a time for breakfast and uh, everyone is eligible to take as many uh, slices of bread as possible so it is a breakfast <clears throat> and you are supposed to get ready for the breakfast i mean after breakfast there is some drill so you have to supposed to be ready after breakfast so someone takes just four slices of bread and it is stuffed you take two slices someone takes uh, three slices person like me will take eight slices or 10 slices i don't know so the idea is the number of slices which you take the one who will take maximum slice i can say the capacity is more for that person isn't it? that's logical yes so similarly <clears throat> if i give you only one task which is common to all and i'll check that who <laughs> who will take how much charge for the same task so what we do is we give charge to all and we check how much charge is just good enough to raise the potential by 1 volt of every conductor then that charge will be the measurement of your capacitance because we cannot measure the absolute value so we make a, we have made a criteria that okay 1 volt is the criteria so i will raise the potential of each conductor by only 1 volt then i'll check how much charge is able to do or achieve this task so the one which takes maximum charge to raise its potential by 1 volt i can say it is having the maximum capacity understood and that is what give the definition of so what we call capacitance is what it is the <coughs> amount of charge that must be <coughs> given to conductor to raise its potential by unity <coughs> so that is very simple thing. it is the amount of charge that must be given to conductor to raise its potential by unity and that should Yes. Yes. Sir. So this definition is the beginning and the end of the chapter. If you understand this definition, nothing can stop you to master the chapter. So what is capacitance of a capacitor? Capacitor is a device which we have defined. What is capacitance of a capacitor? So it is the amount of charge that must be given to conductor to raise its potential by unit. so that is the best way to compare the capacitance of course i cannot measure it i can compare it so this is like a 
if I if you give me two pieces of furniture and if you ask me that how you're going to compare both capacity, I'll just check the <coughs> I'll ground the connector. So what I will do is not ground. Uh, I will uh, give some charge to the connector and then I'll check its potential rise until I'll keep on giving till the potential reaches the one volt value. And once it reaches the one volt, I will say this is its capacity. And this is a very nice quantitative way to compare anyone's capacitance. Understood? Yes, sir. So let's say to raise the potential by delta V, the charge given is Q. So to raise the potential by one volt, how much charge you must be? Q by more V. See, the small V represents potential and capital V represents voltage, which means difference of potential. So you can also write like this. Both are same. Okay, and by definition, the charge required to raise the potential by one volt is called capacity. Yeah, that's why right. this is the form. Now, what you need to understand is <coughs> charge is given, V is measured, the ratio is taken to get C. What are the steps to get C? Charge is given, V is measured. And the ratio is giving a C value. Okay, so this is the basically the algorithm which I will write later on. <laughs> to find the capacitance of any conductor, the steps are very simple. You give charge to one, you check the potential, take the ratio, you get the C. So capacitance, of course, does it depend on charge or potential? Potential. See, your capacity is well defined or I defined by the bread slice. I check by giving you slice of bread, isn't it? Or do yeah. I decide your capacity by giving you slice? No, I no. check what you have. Mm -hmm. So charge and voltage are the method to check the capacity, not to create the capacitance. Or there is so, you cannot say that the capacitance depends on charge or voltage. Can we say it? No. Your ability is already intact, but to, how to check your ability? So what I do is I'll give you charge. I'll check the potential, take the ratio. I'll so forth. This is your capacity. Is this much? So the way to understand is we give charge and potential never decides the capacitance. It is purely a geometrical property and the property of medium. <clears throat> so it is the medium and the the geometrical shape and the size which will eventually dictate your capacity, not the charge and V. Charge and V are the method to get to know what who you are. That's right. I hope this explains uh, the idea of capacitance. Anyone having any doubt, please raise your hand. No. No doubt. Sir. No, that's not required. No, see, you can give any charge and you will see the potential. So you take the ratio. That's it. Isn't it, Arthur? You give any charge you want. Don't give uh, exactly to one volt. I'm saying you give any charge. So let's say you give two micro column charge and you see the rise of potential is uh, 0.1 volt. Go fair enough. So for 0.1 volt, if you need two micro column charge, so for one volt, how much you need? Which is like 20 micro coulomb, right? Isn't it? Yes. 20 micro coulomb per volt. So coulomb per volt is called per art. So coulomb per volt. We called per art in the honor of Michael Faraday. So he designed the first indigenous uh, condenser. We called condenser that time. Now we call capacitor. So <clears throat> it's still till date, the commercial name of capacitor is condenser only. So if you, if you see the, if you remove the cap of your ceiling fan, if you have ceiling fan at home, 
you can see there is a cylindrical shape object so that is basically a capacitor and it is sold in the market in the name of condenser so, and the speed of the fan depends on condenser <clears throat> so if the condenser becomes very old your fan will slow down so you will ask bring the electrician and you will say okay the fan is not running very fast or later is to run very fast you just change that condenser which will cost say 80 to 70 rupees and then your fan will run like helicopter Anyway, so <clears throat> we'll come to all this thing later on, don't worry. One moment. So first of all, <clears throat> because capstance is defined as charge, I mean not defined, it is measured in this respect, Q by V, and therefore we can talk about the units, <clears throat> Coulomb per volt, and this is called Farad. And we use the <coughs> capital F. Now, Farad is a huge unit of capstance. I mean, practically, we never uh, talk about one Farad. And I think in the chapter of electrolysis, uh, electrolysis in chemistry, you might have heard about that one Farad is actually 9,600 Coulomb, right? Yes, 9,600 yes. and uh, 40, 40. No, no, 500. Yeah, 5, 6, 5, 0, 0. yeah, 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 something like that. Anyway. <coughs> So commercially, we are only happy with the tiny units. So we talk about the microfarad, which means 10 power minus 6 farad, nanofarad minus 9 farad, picofarad, millifarad. Uh, so these are famous uh, commercial units, or you can say if you read any Text question you will come across that okay, they generally write mu f, nf, pf, mf. For the reason they are talking about the subscript, <coughs> uh, the power of 10 prefix, you can say, or subscript. So these are the commercial value. Okay, Farad is really usually we never use Farad. Dimension, let's talk about dimension. So <clears throat> dimension we can find by dimension of charge and dimension of voltage. So you can use the basic definition to get the dimension. So charge is uh, current into time. And what is voltage? <clears throat> anyway, I'll come to this later on, I guess. And voltage, what is the definition of voltage? It is again. What was the potential difference or uh, potential definition? Well, Inherent. Work done upon charge. That's yes. it. So because once we are connecting into something uh, <coughs> familiar, it's easy. And the work is forced into displacement. The easy way to get it. Charge is current in, into time. Force is mass into acceleration. S is the displacement. Okay, so we have to be careful what we mean by this. So now we can write MPA square T square. <coughs> Mass is capital M. Acceleration is L T minus two meter per second square, and the displacement is L again. Whenever someone is asking you find the dimension, do not get worried. You just keep on writing till you get the more fundamental relationship as you know. Okay, and once you know, you can write like this. You can uh, easily get the dimension. <laughs> This is M minus one, L square, T power four, A square. So the dimension of capacitance is this much. Again, it's very easy to remember. Something that we must be familiar with is uh, capacitance. of a capacitor depends upon so capacitance of capacitor <coughs> depends on 
shape, size, and the medium. surrounding the conductor. So capacitance of a capacitor depends on <coughs> upon shape, size and medium surrounding the conductor. Uh, just to avoid any ambiguity, No, no, no. It, it has nothing to do with the material. Conductor is just like a placeholder. So whether we have co copper or aluminum, where the charge will reside? On the surface. Okay. Yes. So whether it's a Neil Kamal furniture or it's a, some other brand furniture, you are going to uh, sit on the chair. You're not going to jump on the chair, right? I mean, unless you're not a kid. So every type of material of conductor is conductor. And when I say conductor, then I never talk about the aluminum or copper or gold or something. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can, if you are a Dubai Sheikh, you can make a gold chair also. It's up to you. Okay. So they have even uh, the toilets made of gold. I mean, no offense to them. The next is, uh, okay, just to avoid any ambiguity. Capacitance does not depend upon charge or potential. <clears throat> so, what is the charge in potential actually uh, meant for here? It is meant to understand what is the capacity. It's like the reverse process. Do you have the capacity? But to measure it quantitatively, I'll give some charge, we'll check the V, we'll take the ratio, and then I'll come to the, okay, yeah, that's your capacitance. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes. Now, generally, every connector is a capacitor, but when it comes to the practical designing of capacitor, we always prefer two plates in designing paradigm. Okay. So technically, every connector is a capacitor, but if you have heard about parallel plate capacitor, spherical capacitor, so they always comprise of two surfaces. So at least two layer of uh, charge storing area. So the question is why two plates are so important? So, I mean, of course, there's no topic like this. So still, I wanted to say this is called why two plates. Why not just one plate is good enough. <clears throat> so if you remember, I talked about something called the confinement of energy. Okay. So the first goal of a <clears throat> practical design of a capacitor as a circuit element is to have the charge storing ability, to have the energy storing ability, and the energy storing ability should be a finite. So if I have a charge, it will create the field lines everywhere. And definitely, if you create the field lines everywhere, it will, it may affect the overall function of circuit, isn't it? So imagine if, if you bring your television in an external electric field, you will see your TV will not function. And if you want to understand this, you can take your mobile phone near the television, you can see there is, a, it will create some disturbance. There is an interference of electromagnetic radiation, isn't it? Have you seen this, I've done this? Yeah. So, if you yes. put your mobile phone near the computer screen, it will get disturbed. <laughs> the pixel may go haywire. Okay, nowadays it may not be possible, but earlier the Nokia phone was so powerful, it should dis disrupt the entire screen. I have seen that. Anyway, <laughs> so the idea is <clears throat> if I am having a charge storing ability, so charge will create the field. I don't want the field to spread everywhere in the circuit because it should not hamper the functioning of the circuit. And especially in case of a <coughs> semiconductor devices circuit, it is very, very important to control those 
effect because even a slightest field will alter the function and uh, it is possible that uh, a signal will miscommunicate in those devices. So that is the reason why we use the two plates, but uh, there is more intrinsic reason than this or basic reason than this. <clears throat> so if you bring two plates, so green is like a supporter. Okay, so what we do is, see, we are still <clears throat> giving charge to one plate. I'm giving charge to this plate because I am trying to understand the <coughs> the capacitance of this connector. So when you give charge to this plate, what will happen? Its potential will rise as usual, right? Yes. But what? <coughs> sorry. But what you don't realize that this charge. will create induction on the nearby surface and like this. Okay, so this is the induced conductor just because being present in the vicinity of the conductor who you have given the charge, the induction will create two separate layer which you never actually expected. And as a result of this creation, what will happen? This negative, and uh, we know that a positive charge creates positive potential, so negative will create negative. negative. So this will actually lower down the potential by some value, let's say V, uh, let's call V1. So you decrease the potential by V1 being in the vicinity, but the other plus part of yours will increase the potential by V2. But which effect is going to be dominant, V1 or V2? V1 because it is near. Correct. So technically, you can see <coughs> that the distance will matter. So V1 uh, minus V1 is more effective than plus V2. And therefore, can we say that overall potential of this conductor will decrease from the previous case? Yes. So the conductor whom you have given the charge, the net potential will be how much? It is plus V minus V1 plus V2, right? Which you can write is V minus. So now <clears throat> a charge Q is raising the potential by V net. Okay. And therefore, the new capacitance of this old conductor will be how much? The charge given upon the rising potential. Isn't it? Yes. <clears throat> that is the definition. No? And therefore, we can add as V minus. And can we say this is more than C? Yes. So not only we are able to confine, but we are also able to raise the potential mean, capacitance. So having this kind of arrangement will eventually increases the capacitance of a conductor. Okay. Uh, sir, please will you explain from that part. So after induction. So so after induction, we have two layer of charge, one plus and one minus. Yeah. The negative layer will decrease the potential <coughs> or at least will offer you some negative potential. Uh, Is it understood, yeah. And the plus we also offer you some positive potential. So net potential is what? Potential is a scalar quantity. So we have to use the principle of superposition. <coughs> and what is the principle of superposition? The net potential will be sum of all potential. Yes, sir. And therefore, the net potential of the first conductor, where our interest lies, the net potential of the first conductor will decrease and therefore, the overall capacitance will increase. Is this understood? Sir, is this two plate system of type of capacitor? Yeah, type of. Correct. Is this particular that uh, 
bringing someone in the vicinity will increase your capacity. And mind it, we are not touching it. It is still far up. I mean, far means uh, at some separation. The separation is really small. It is like generally when we, I mean, actually do it uh, practically, uh, we keep the separation from micrometer to millimeter. Okay. In case of semiconductor devices, the separation is in nanometer. Imagine. So we have a nanometer thick layer of silicon. <clears throat> and in that layer, one side is a positive charge, the other side is negative charge. And the between part is called substrate, in which we have some of the free charge. <clears throat> And this substrate charge will move here and there will create the capacitor like arrangement. So someone was asking me that uh, what kind of material the conductor must be. Let me tell you, we make entire microchip using silicon. And you know that silicon is not a conductor, right? So it's a semiconductor. Yes. Okay. So what I said, technically we can create any kind of material for the sake of capacitor. So we have silicon also, we have germanium also, and we have mixed alloys also, which creates the <coughs> microchip. And therefore all sort of <coughs> material can be employed to create capacity. <coughs> okay. The third part is, so we do not stop it here. We in fact go further and ground it. And we know that the moment you ground a conductor, its potential will become zero. So if we have a conductor here, and who, uh, which conductor we are going to ground? The one given charge, the one not given charge. So we should ground the yellow one the red or the green one. Can you guess? Green one. Yeah, we only ground the conductor which is not one of us whose capacitance we are not going to calculate because the moment you ground something its capacitance is infinite so there is no point of because any amount of charge you give to that conductor it will take it easily right so the grounded one will have how much capacity infinite infinite, infinite. So it's like meaningless to say that uh, try to, trying to find the capacitance of a green one. That's meaningless for sure. We only find the capacitance which is isolated. <coughs> Anything which is grounded, we never ever calculate the capacitance. And calculation of capacitance of the isolated conductor, even in the presence of other conductor which is grounded in textbook you will not see this explicit uh, literature they have kind of confused everyone so they will say okay find the capacitance of a system technically it's infinite if i take a system <coughs> in which one is grounded other is not grounded but don't worry for when they say say system you only keep your idea to the isolated one the grounded one will have unknown defined capacity I mean, we don't define for a grounded one we only say the isolated one and its capacity so they will say find the capacity of a system which is unfortunate question but because it is the way it is i cannot change it further <laughs> so what i will suggest that okay whenever you read that question don't worry you read that question, but understand the way I'm saying, you try to find for the isolated one. That is the meaning of system in their literature. Okay. 
so why grounding let's do it now the moment you ground something more will happen and i'll come to this again once you don't worry the plus will start coming on this side and minus will come in here and then <coughs> the plus which was appearing on the other side will vanish okay i'll prove it very soon why but it will vanish so the rise in potential by v value and the fall by minus v1 is the only thing and therefore <coughs> you can clearly see the net will be how much it is v minus v1 and v1 is quite effective it is almost diminishing so c double dash will be how much <coughs> and this will be much bigger than c dash so now the grounding further enhances the capacitance of a conductor and therefore we have a sequence you can say c double dash is more than c dash more than c and the last concept is if we insert some dielectric medium if we put some insulator between the conductors that will further increase the capacitance but we'll come to that in a different topic called dielectric okay so <clears throat> we went through some of the basic logic of capacitance the definition the meaning the purpose and why we are studying here so essentially it's not a new chapter it's just like a, uh, there is a very nice way of uh, writing this term as c in circuit so the relationship that you should be aware of <coughs> uh, you can make a small uh, high school method of a triangle You write here Q. So C equals to Q I V, V equals to Q I C, and Q equals to C V. So three formula that we should be aware of: Q equals to C V, potential difference equals to Q I C, <coughs> and what is left? V equals to and C equals to. So in every capacitor, these three relations are very important. You just need to know the manipulation. Q equals to C V. So <clears throat> if you can write these three equations, I can guarantee you, you can master this chapter. That's it. So now we have something called classification. so we have divided the capacitor in two separate uh, classification one is based on geometry another is called based on dielectric which you put between the plate so based on geometry we have some of the very famous name the one is called parallel plate capacitor <coughs> the second is called inclined plate capacitor the third is <coughs> 
is spherical capacitor the fourth is just on So based on the dielectric, if you don't insert anything, we can call it air capacitor. Nothing is there. Air is there. Let's say. If we insert paper, you can say paper capacitor. You may insert mica. So you can put anything you want. You may be putting a uh, rajma chawal. You can say rajma chawal capacitor or chole butter capacitor or anything. It's just a dielectric which you choose to put. These are the general trend which we put. The most expensive one will have the liquid capacitor with pure insulting liquid. The cost will decrease for mica and then paper will be the cheaper. Air is free first. So when you go and buy a condenser, then it's I mean, sold in the market. The price of the condenser depends on the dye which they use. Uh, technically, they never use the air capacitor. They always use the <coughs> some capacitor, like which is not air, either paper or mica. So liquids are used for some other purpose. You can read a lot about all these uses. So before we try to understand the capacitance of a capacitor, we'll try to understand the, <coughs> the algorithm of solving any question. So there are two personal methods by which we solve the question. So the steps are very simple. So what we generally do is we give charge Q to one of the plate, but it is a very good idea that you give charge to one plate and give minus Q to other plate. Or you just give to charge Q to one plate and ground the other plate. It's the same situation. So there are two ways. One is, and because when we are going to derive the capstance, we'll keep two plates always. So, Step one, give charge Q to one plate and ground the other, I say not other. and ground the other okay. or Give plus Q 
charge to one plate and minus q to so when you start solving problem then you have to uh, stick one of the two choice you just stick to one of them to derive the formula the best is you can take plus and minus one if you want you can take plus q and ground the other that's how we try to calculate so after doing the step one what is the next step possible logical step Whenever you give charge to any plate, you the next step is to distribute it. Okay. And distribute as per the property of conductor. So you know that how charge will distribute. It will never cross the surface of another conductor. So distribute charge as per property of conductor. So after the distribution is done, okay, I'll show you the example by one by one. After the, uh, we are done with the distribution, the next step is, so once your distribution is done, you should be able to understand the nature of electric field. <coughs> okay. And once we have the electric field, spread out in some space use the gauss law to calculate its value because we want the net field, not the individual plate contribution we want the resultant field <coughs> so what we say is find e see if you know the e it's very good if you don't know try to find it so find e, e using gauss law because we are only looking for the resultant field of all charge distribution. We never take the field of one plate or the other. We take the net field to every charge possible in this space, the resultant, okay? So you got the E using Gauss law. <clears throat> what is the next step? Now this is a very, very important part. So once you have the electric field, you have to find the potential difference between the plates. So find potential difference between the plates and to find the potential difference you will move from one plate to other plate <coughs> and you will use the formula delta V equals to minus E dot the DL. I hope you know this formula. So once you have got the E using the Gauss law, this formula will be helpful to you. And if E is constant, then we can just take it out and become E into separation, right? Okay. So we just want the, the modulus. If your answer is coming negative, just take it positive. <clears throat> and then comes the, the toughest step. Write the definition as C equals to Q upon S. If you can really go through these four, uh, five steps, you can solve any question of capacitor which is. Yeah, I'm saying which is. Any question. However difficult it is, you're not supposed to think other than any of these five steps. Just follow it. I mean, you get all answers. So try to map these five steps in your brain, then I'll proceed to the next one. Try to feed it right now. So everyone has fed? Maybe. No, sir, one minute. So once you close your eyes, you should see these five I mean, steps. If you're not able to see these five steps, then again, close your eyes. Okay. Keep on doing till you get it. And once you get it, raise your hand. I'll just see where I got this.
Please will you show the last thing. Yes, I the last the step page. Yeah. This one. Yes. Oh, moment, oh, huh? Okay. So distributing charges per property of conductor. Yeah, you cannot put the charge inside the conductor, right? Yeah. Or charge if there are two players, then possibly they will induce each other. And the induced yeah. charge will have also some pattern as per the law of conductor, right? Yeah. Okay. Through some example, will, this will become more clear. But as of now, what I'm asking is can you put these five steps in your brain sequentially? I mean, at least this should be clear that what you are supposed to do when it comes to the question of finding the capstance of a capacitor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll go to the next question. I think many have got this idea. Those who have got a All right. So I think we can. Uh, and go to the next concept. Again, don't think that you're going to learn a new chapter. What I said is, we are, it is the continuation of electrostatics. So we are going to use those formulas. We are just going to put in a new symbolic packet called C. So we are trying to express everything in terms of C. <clears throat> a large variety of questions we can solve just by using the old concept of electrostatics without resorting to this capacitor method. It is quite possible. So in fact, our first two lectures will be uh, without the idea of capacitor. We'll we will solving using the definition itself. Okay, all questions. And uh, the question which they asked this year in capital also, the direct question, which is very, very easy question. Uh, much difficult question than that we have solved in the lecture. Okay, <clears throat> so even the capital question was so easy, you can almost mentally answer if you know the basics. So we'll start with the first one called Let's put a heading. Calculation of capacitance of parallel plate The calculation of capacitance of parallel plate capacitor. So, of course, uh, a parallel plate capacitor you simply do the two plates. You can see there are two plates. <coughs> so 
technically this is called the pet one this is the pet two and this entire is called area sometimes we have the length and width given uh, instead of area and we have a separation between the plate now the separation is the very tricky part because separation mm -hmm. will play the role <coughs> of creating uniform fit or a fill with some symmetry so until we are not going to take this uh, so until d is not very small this uh, the arrangement will never be able to create a uniform field <coughs> for large suppression we cannot draw the field itself so please will repeat this sir. No, see if you have plate and if you charge the plate the field will be uniform only when the the plate will act as infinite sheet mm, yes sir and when the field will act as infinite sheet when the d is very small yeah, it's small yeah. yes because in that case the every point with in between the plate is point close to the plate itself except the edges of course at edge things will change drastically now this kind of arrangement you will see only for the first time here the next time they will only do the two side view what you see the two thin line so right now what you're looking at is called the side view of capsule understood so okay. plate is inside like this which i'm not sure and now I have exerted, uh, I have exited, uh, I have increased the separation actually to a large value. This is the exaggeration of the D. So I have just shown the D to be very, very large just for some sake of uh, computing. So if D is really large, what will happen? The two connectors are said to be isolated. If D is tending to infinity, what we call these two conductors as isolated conductors. What does it mean? At very large separation, will they interact with each other? No. No. So they are as good as isolated, yes or no? Yes. So whenever you will give some charge, oh, now see, there are two methods. So what I'll do, I'll come to that method later. Let's say you give charge Q1 to this. <clears throat> How the charge will distribute itself? If you give charge Q1 to a plate, how the charge will distribute? If it is connecting plate. Yeah, then. The charge Q1 will is spread over the surface. Yes, sir. On both sides or one side. Both sides, right? Of course. Yes. There should not be any ambiguity. These two plates are isolated, related, which means they are far away from each other. There is no interaction. <coughs> The charge on one is not getting affected due to charge on other. Okay. So the charge will distribute equally on both sides. So how much charge will distribute on one side? On this side, how much charge we must have? Q1 by 2. Q1 
Now, why equal charge on both sides? Why not unequal charge? It should be uniformly distributed, right? Because Q two is not affecting it. The other plate is not. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. So the answer is unless it is not equal on both sides, we cannot achieve the zero field inside the conductor. And that is the primary goal, right? In every conductor, the primary goal is we must achieve zero field inside the conductor, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And that is only possible if the density of charge is same on both sides, right? Yes. If it is unequal, then we have two unequal sheets, so they will never cancel the answer, right? Yes. That's why. That's why I said it's a the distribution must be done as per the property of conductor. Property is what the E must be zero. And this is what we discussed in the electrostatics. Do you remember? Yes. Anyone? Do you remember this? Yes, sir. The same will be true for the U2 as well. Yeah. And again, here also the E is zero. Understood? Yes. Oh, it looks like some uh, Japanese sign notation, right? but it's E per G. So this is the situation when the two connectors are not affecting each other, they're quite far away from each other. What will happen if I bring them closer? I'll make it slightly thicker just to explain. <coughs> now, now they are not very far away, it means they are close enough to affect each other. I'm taking the gap as very small. And if the gap is very small, let's call it D. So given the charge Q1 and Q2, <coughs> can we stick to the old distribution? And do we need to change the distribution? We need to change. Yeah. Because if we stick to the old distribution, then the field becomes non zero. Yes. Hello. Isn't it? Yeah. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so now the question is if I assume Q1 by 2 here, Q1 by 2 here, Q2 by 2 here, Q2 by 2 here, and if I choose the point here, what will happen? This pair will cancel for sure, but this pair will create the next field left. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The same is here also. This pair will cancel, but this pair will create the next effect, right? Which means this distribution must change to keep the property of conductor intact. That's why I always say the distribution will always change because conductor will make sure that the resultant field inside is zero. <coughs> is this clear? Yes. Yes, sir. So now the obvious question is how the new distribution will be because we have no idea. So that is how we start with we assume some new distribution. And I'll say that let's say that the charge which appears on this side is X. I can choose other symbol also. That's it. X is easy. So now <coughs> the first property is if a conductor is isolated, what we cannot change? For any isolated connector, what we cannot change? We cannot change its charge. Yes. When I say isolated, it means nothing can go there, nothing can come from there. So such conductor cannot conduct. 
<coughs> sorry so in the worst case scenario what they can do is they can re arrange their own charge which they have so if they have five coulomb they will put one coulomb one side four other side two one other three and so on this one Okay. So, as long as a conductor is isolated, what remains constant? It's charge. So, rule number one is <clears throat> any isolated conductor will follow the conservation of charge principle also blue the net charge of any isolated conductor remains constant the simple the rule 2 is always there the final distribution Now the rule three is very famous, but uh, you will only study in the high studies called the Kelvin minimum energy principle that whenever we have a, <coughs> a charge conductors kept in the vicinity of each other, the distribution will not only make the field zero, but at the same time, the distribution will be in such a way that the total energy of system is minimum. So that's what the Kelvin, Kelvin minimum energy principle that the final distribution will have the least energy. So you cannot change that configuration further. Because that is the most stable configuration in terms of energy if you want to think it is the most stable configuration actually <coughs> so final distribution so let's say final charge distribution just to make it explicit So the final charge distribution will be for the will follow the least energy configuration. So if you again remember these steps in your mind again, you can do anything easy. So if I assume charge on this side, how much we need to assume on the other side? Q1 minus six. Q1 minus X. Fine, very good. Now again, D is very small, so we are going to consider this as two infinite sheet. Okay. <coughs> so what will happen next? The charge on X will create the field in which direction? Let's say that X is representing some plus charge. So how the field lines will be? 
So full lens will be always per Out. pinnacle to surface. Ah, yes. At least yes. it will begin like this. Yes. But can it continue forever? No. Because the the metal in front of it will not let it go past, right? Yes. What does it mean? <coughs> Every lens of force which begins at plus x will end at or uh, minus will end at the facing surface. Yes. And to end x charge, how much charge we need on the facing surface? Minus x. So the second rule, which is called rule number four. facing surface must have equal and opposite charge so either there should not be any charge or if there is a charge then it must be equal and opposite <coughs> so either it will be zero or it will be plus 6 minus 6 always and again, this rule is very, very important to you. <coughs> so the x will create minus x for sure without any ambiguity. So what about the other side? How much are you expect on this side? Plus x. Yeah. Any I no, no, minus x. Uh, <coughs> right. Q2 plus x. The net charge here will be such that the net charge is conservant. Yes. Because what we know is, what we know, for any isolated conductor, the net charge cannot change. Yeah. Isn't it? Yes. So you cannot change the net value because these are isolated conductors. <coughs> Now I can say that okay, or claim that okay, I have a charge distribution. And you can see how many layers of charge we have. Four. Four layers. So can we find the, the nature of field between the plates? So I hope you can see that the field lines must be like this. And not only this, it will be uniform as well. Why? Because the D is very small, isn't it? So we take the D as so small that <coughs> the two plates are almost touching each other. But there is a drawback. I mean, the field lens is uniform between the plate, but as you come near the edge, you will get some. Field which is going much beyond the place. And this concept is again very important because this is called fringe electric field. <coughs> the fringe Fringe electric field. Understood. So, what is your fringe electric field? The field beyond the volume of capacitor or the field which is outside the capacitor. Now, right now, in the calculation of capacitance, we ignore the fringe effect. So, the rule 5 is. Fringe. Effect is ignored while calculating capacitance. <coughs> At the end of this chapter, when we study the force on a dielectric, then we'll again bring the fringe field and I'll tell you how the fringe is the only field which is responsible for the, the dielectric uh, force on a dielectric.
that to come at the end of the chapter, long time to go. So once we have the distribution, we'll go back to the fundamental property of connector. What is the fundamental property of connector? That the final distribution will always make the electric field inside zero. So we can choose any one of them because we have just only one variable. And so we just need only one equation to choose any connector and derive the net field to each layer by treating every layer as infinite sheet. Which kind of sheet? Conducting or non conducting? Conducting. Every layer will act as which kind of sheet? Conducting sheet or non conducting sheet? Conducting. Anybody else want to say something? So perhaps you don't remember the infinite sheet calculation which you did in the first one. Like whatever is, wherever it is not given, we take non-conducting that way. A layer is simply charged. It is not yes. a conductor. Conductor is the setup. Okay. So when I say find the electric field due to conductor, then you have to take both layers in this case. Okay. When I say the layer itself, a layer is representing just a charge layer. Okay. So it is nothing to do with the conductor, it is just a layer of charge. And therefore, what we call every layer will behave as every layer will behave as infinitely large non conducting sheet okay the layer wise right see conductor creates two layer no? so the conductor is a, I mean, a medium with the property that it creates two layer but layer is not a conductor conductor facilitates the two layer formation but a layer only represents the charge which is deposited there understood yeah. And because, <clears throat> because the charge is deposited there, so you have a layer of charges non-conductor. Non-conductor means in a non-conducting medium, the charge occupies the volume. So technically, there's a layer here, as thin as you can imagine, in which the charge is present. Same as here. It is not outside, it is in this volume. Same as here. And the, the charge which we have drawn there, this plus are here actually. And of course, charge can't be in here, right? So this layer will act as a non connecting layer. Yes. And therefore, the field will be <coughs> filled to each layer will be what? Infinite non connecting sheet. Infinite non connecting sheet. So can we find the net field on any uh, connector and make it zero? So <clears throat> we can add here. In previous case, So what is the electric field to do the non-connecting sheet? U by 2 epsilon. 
Ah, sigma two, yes. So if you can look at this diagram. So here the electric field will be contributed by how many layers? Two layers. Two layers. Huh? In the yeah, any point inside any connector will be having contribution from how many layers? How many layers of charge will contribute their field at point inside the connector? How many charge layers we have? Four. So how many contribution? Four. Four. And every layer is infinite. She. Yes. I'm done. So choose any connector. Let's call the point P. And you can see the layers. So tell me the field at point P due to each layer along with the direction. Is it difficult? Hello, hello, hello. No. So do it. Anyone getting the answer? Okay, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll number the layer and then you can tell. Oh, okay. The first layer will create field at P towards which direction, right or left? Towards right. And second layer? Left. Third layer? Uh, 
third layer yeah please left left third layer is uh, positive uh, or negative negative ah uh, negative or uh, right then why why the confusion i mean my doubt questions why every time you need to get confused a so negative will create a, which kind of field attractive field? yes so for sure the negative will be towards right yes at point p right yes yes the next four four left towards the right so what you are supposed to do because you can see the direction you are supposed to write the field value at point p due to every layer in terms of charge and area so take the area as a of each surface because the answer is sigma sigma is what charge upon area yes yeah can you write the field value with the direction and uh, because net is zero so you can just look at zero you get some answer for x so everyone please try this and tell me x <coughs> i will not solve because that's your job i have explained everything i think so you understood the point p you understood the direction can you write it is it so difficult to write Can you write, guys? Yes or no? Yes, sir. So please write down and tell me the answer for X. What is next coming? Hello. Yeah. So what the answer? I think. Tell me. Uh, is it Q one minus Q two by two? Correct. Okay. So the first layer we get right, second we get left. So I can say E one, E two. The third will try to attract. What will repel? And uh, then we can say e two plus e four must be equal to one plus three, isn't it? And we have to add only value because we have taken the direction. Okay. So what is e two? Minus six by eight. No, see, you cannot add minus plus. You have to add only value. Okay. Okay. You have you have, Here you have, we have taken, taken the direction. The direction. Mm -hmm. the direction, you just add the values. So what is e two? X by two X by A. X by A two A option not right? Yes, two A. Because it is sigma by two option not right? The e four is how much? Q two plus two plus X, plus X upon two A absolutely not. Where is it? So the denominator will cancel out as such. Of course, it cancels. Yes. So we, we next time we can write just just the charge. Yeah. What is E one? Q Q one minus X upon two epsilon. What is E three? Uh, X, X upon two epsilon. Not. So this will of course cancel out. This will also cancel out. So what you can see clearly.
u2 plus x equals to 2 so 2x is how much x is how much understood yes sir <coughs> okay <coughs> sure. So once you get the x, which is the only variable, now you can actually write the final distribution in terms of q1 and q2 because x was unknown. We got the x using the definition of connector, but you can say uh, property of connector. Now can you can, uh, can you go back and find the actual charge? Let's do it. So I'll uh, redraw the connectors for the sake of going. I will not draw thicker. So now let me need the values. The X is how much? We got how much? Q1 minus Q2. Right. This will be minus of this. So what will be the outer part? What is the outer part? <coughs> Q1 plus Q2 by yes. And the same is here also? Ah, yes. Yeah. And now you can realize something that for parallel plate configuration, the field will cancel out only when because the facing pair will have always equal in opposite charge. So pair wise, they will cancel. The outer will be canceling everywhere only when they are equal. So outermost surface of any parallel plate capital, no matter how many plate I choose, three, four, five, or uh, thousands, as long as they are in a very close proximity, we can use any number. <coughs> So the rule as a thumb rule, what you need to remember that outermost surface will have charge equals to the half of the total charge given to system of conductor. Once again, the total charge given, uh, the total charge on the outermost surface, first of all, will be equal and numerically equals to average of the, not average, the half of the total charge given to the system. So this you can see the unsaid rule, but you can remember the rule. And what is the unsaid rule? The outermost surface The outermost surface for system parameters will have <coughs> equal charge and then numerically equals to half of the charge given okay <coughs> outer most surface for system of parallel pets will have uh, equal charge and numerically equals to 
half of the total charge given to system, not one. So we'll do some practical uh, application, then that will be easier for you. So you see, if I give one connector as charge Q, other is minus Q, what will happen? <coughs> so what is the net charge given to system? Zero. Zero. So zero. What, is, what is half of zero? Zero. Very good. So you all know mathematics, huh? So zero by two is? Six. And two by zero is? Infinity. Very bad. What you asked? Two by zero. Zero by two is zero. And two by two zero. Undefined. <coughs> it is undefined. It's either zero plus or zero minus for it to go to infinity. It should be either less than slightly zero, it is tending to zero. So if it is two by number tending to zero, then it is infinite. Okay. And there's a huge difference. This is not same. So two by exact zero is meaningless. So you have to always think zero is as a nothing. So I'm saying two by nothing. Huh? What is this? Division is possible, mathematics is possible with something. You cannot have a mathematics with nothing. Now here, when I write x tends to 0, what is the meaning? 2 by something which is very small. So 2 by or inverse of something very small is very large. Oh, not good. Yes, sir. <coughs> okay. got it. See, we cannot do the mathematical operation with nothing. Yes. So nothing power infinity. What is the mathematics of nothing power infinity? Nothing. Indeterminate. So this is called yeah, indeterminate or undefined. So mathematics only deal with something. That's why the zero should be taken with very clear. So can we create uh, something out of nothing? No. Exactly. So So now if zero is on the left, zero is on the right, we have to follow the conservation charge. How much charge will appear here? Q. It means if you give equal in an opposite charge to two parallel pet capacitor, all charge will appear only on the facing surface, not outside. Understood? Okay. Now, the same 
configuration can be achieved sir hmm. uh, last question did we complete that question which one a uh, last question we found x ha ah, so we did we are done with everything see okay okay we got the final distribution right yes <laughs> Now imagine if you give charge Q, but you ground the other one. Now grounding means what? The potential is zero. Yes. And if you look at the nearest surface, I mean sorry, if you look on the other side, which is called infinity. So at infinity, the potential is also zero. So yes. if we have zero here and zero here, then can we accept anything here? no so we cannot expect any field here and no field will be present here if the e is zero in the entire space between the this plate to infinity then that is only possible if there is no charge here understood yeah yes so if any charge will come then field will come so to avoid any uh, any field the charge must be avoided and the moment outer surface will have zero charge on one side the other has to be zero yes because the pair wise cancellation is already happened here so this is always going to be fair. i mean this is always going to be equal and opposite yes. and because the ungrounded part is having zero charge on the other left side so all of the q will appear here yeah and because facing surface must have opposite charge so minus, two, minus, minus. see i can achieve the task or you can say configuration in two ways that's why if you remember the algorithm which i wrote now read it you will get the better meaning of now now does it make some sense to you now yes so both will create the similar configuration that is the whole idea okay <clears throat> so whenever we solve numerical or we try to figure out of the uh, capacitance of a capacitor you can stick to two method in the second method because the one of them is grounded because this is at zero potential so potential difference is nothing but the potential of the first one isn't it yes so delta v here will be how much only v yeah so if you give charge q to the first conductor and if you raise its potential by v to find the v you just find delta v delta v is easy to find why because delta v we can use the electric field definition we know the field is like this so knowing the gap and also knowing the fact that e is constant what is the delta v by the way integration of e so e that's e that's e is constant na yes So E dot so D will become E D. Simply E D. Yes. And nowadays, so you should not forget E D. Because E D is reading everywhere, right? Yes. Okay. Enforcement direct direct. Yeah. Okay. So E D is the delta V potential difference, and uh, one should not forget because uh, every day in the news we are learning this term E D. Anyway. now delta v you actually got delta v but what you got is v also without realizing okay so delta v is v isn't it yes so can we say when you give charge q to this plate the potential got risen by v isn't it so what is the capacitance of system by definition if you remember q by v q by v q by v 
Yeah. Delta, but which is uh, delta? V. Yes. The definition is given v, but that is also equal to v delta v. Huh. So we use both from like interchangeably non trivial and uh, delta v is how much ed yes we also know the resultant electric field inside a capacitor if you draw gaussian surface like this this is e this is zero so what is the e value so e da let's call d as the surface area the flux through the Gaussian surface is how much? You can see this is Gaussian surface. What is the flux? Can we say E D? Yes. Other side is zero. And net flux equals to how much? Charge into which is sigma into D A. D A upon up. So the net field here will be how much? Sigma by absolute not. And sigma we define is charge upon area. <laughs> So because we got the electric field as well, you can write as a Q by A absolute naught into D. The Q gets cancelled, and the answer is absolute naught A by D. See, with the algorithm that we wrote, if we strictly follow it, we are going to get the formula for capacitance. So this aggregate. Uh, the write up we call capacitance C, and you can see C depends on medium and geometry because A and D are geometrical property, and absolute not is the property of medium. And the medium that we talk about is the space between the plate, not outside. Okay, so yes. what really matters is absolute not right now it's an air capacitor, so we have absolute not. If I insert something here. The epsilon will change to the epsilon of the medium. Understood? Yes. So I'll prove it that later on, but right now let me write down. If the space between plate is filled with dielectric if the space between the plate is completely filled with dielectric of dielectric constant K, then permittivity of medium will be how much? K absolute not. So the capacitance we write as absolute A by D, but absolute we can also write as K, K yes. absolute not A by D. So you can see C with dielectric is K times C with air. So a dielectric will increase the capacitance K times. Assuming it is completely filled, not a part of it. So you can see that using the basic definition, we got the formula for capacitance. What I will encourage you to always go through the basic because basic never confuses in a situation where we have a lot of conceptual ambiguity that how to answer this. It is the fundamental method which gives the correct answer because those who don't know, they may end up saying that capstance depends on charge and voltage because in 90% student in their mind, what they think is a formula shows the dependency which is very much wrong, isn't it? Formula never shows the difference. So for infinite, for infinite sheet, the electric field is constant, right? Yes. Either sigma by two option or sigma by option not. Yeah. 
can we say that uh, these sheets are not following the inverse square law? Yes. Can we say that they are not not following the inverse square law? No. No, you cannot say. Those that derive from the inverse square law. Oh, the, uh, okay. Yes. That's that's why I said. Okay. Fundamentally, mm -hmm. if you think formula is the answer, you will get always wrong. Yes. Every formula in Gauss law we derive from the Coulomb. Because law. Gauss law is dependent on inverse square law. Yes. Correct. Inverse square law was the like the basis on which we derive those things, right? Yes. And now you're saying it does not depend. Yeah. So constant is not the criteria of uh, saying that it is not following the inverse color. Rather, it is following the inverse color, so it is giving the answer. Understood? Yes. Okay. Anyway, now this kind of thing is not very easy. Because you may see right now, you may find it's easy, but later on you will forget. So you have to practice, like you have to draw on paper and then uh, do every step. Make yourself acquainted with these kind of writing. So you have to keep on drawing the lines, vertical lines, play with the charge idea. Once you practice enough, you will get to know that, okay, what uh, exactly is the chapter called capture tape. If you don't know the do this practice, you will always find the chapter beyond comprehension. So if I make a multiple plates, not just two, you can make it three also. So there are always two ways of solving every question in physics. One fundamental, other is like formula. Right now you will learn only the stretch method. So you can say one is B, other is let's say, other is D2. And this D1, D2 is very, very small compared to the, the dimension of the sheet. So this is again, infinite sheet for every, every point between them. Uh, this is just for the sake of drawing. <coughs> if I give some charge here, let's say, And if I'm not giving any charge to the middle one, can you tell me the final distribution of charge? Yeah. You tell me. What will appear on the outermost surface? So first of all, we add all charge and we it divide the by half of the total charge. Which is two Q. Yes, two Q. Yeah. Now, because right now everyone is conserved and uh, isolated, so everyone's charge must be conserved. Yes, so minus Q. Minus Q. So minus Q. And the facing must have opposite? Q. Plus Q. Because the this is again isolated, so net is zero. Ah, so minus Q. Facing is? Plus Q. So again, it yes. is conserved. Correct. So no matter whether you shut from left or right, you can always see the answer. But once you have the distribution charge, you can see the field direction. So if I call V1, V2, V3 as potential, can we find the potential difference V2 minus V1? Can we find the difference V3 minus V2? And if the answer is yes, you can do it. Assuming the area is A for every plate. Tell me the difference of this two potential. Okay? Everyone. I'm coming to miss.
Okay, so got the answer. So V two minus V one. So V two minus V one will be how much? I think that is visible to us. Hello, hello, hello. Am I audible, guys? Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. What is the V two minus V one? Okay, if electric field E two is left, it means which one is it high potential? V two is high, V one is at low, right? Yes. So this will be E two D, and V three minus V two will be E one D. Yes. Now the only step is substitute the E two and V. Substitute. Yes. What is E one E two formula? Sigma by two option. So Q by. Q by two A. Uh, not two. It's the sigma by epsilon now. Here E two is the net field of two layer, na? No? Yes, yes. Huh. The plus and minus, and we yes. have derived it, na? No? Gauss law. Gauss law gives the net field, not one layer. Yes, sir. This is the field yes, of sir. the both layer. This plus and minus both. Understood? Yes. Right. So the E two will be Q by F not into D yes. D one. That's the answer. And the V three minus V two becomes. Tell me. It is same. Q by F zero not D two. Now, because we are not knowing potential of any connector, so we have to write like this. The moment you know the potential of one of them as zero or some value, you can exactly tell the potential of every connector, right? So, in case of a Uh, we do not know potential of any one. We can add the differences, but once we know one of them, we can add the exact answer. Okay. So the next question is: <coughs> Look at this. One. Two. So now we have the same situation as before, but let's keep it simple. No, no. So again, it is D one and D two, and uh, okay. Let's keep the same charge given Q and C. Now the change that I'm going to bring here is that these two connectors are not connected. With the help of a wire. So we create a switch. So when switch was open, then the charge given was shown to you. E one three two. So what will happen if you close the switch? What will be the distribution of charge? Once you close the switch, so find the charge distribution after the switch is closed. To find the charge distribution after switch is closed.
sir mm, yes sir i don't know if it's correct but i got something uh, so what what first of all how the charge will distribute i thought that when the switch will be closed then mm. the whole q will go to the 3q why with, with by with what logic you go from there to there Okay, the moment you connect two it connectors, will lose the whole charge, like the first one. But why it will lose? Why not three? Will lose and to go to there. Ah, okay. Sir, I think I'm getting two Q on both of those. Okay. Not sure. Okay, first of all, uh, which connector is isolated here? First, second, third. Let's name it one, two. So, which all connectors are isolated here? Tell me. One, two, or three, or four. Well, one, two, or three. Yeah, one, two, or three. Yeah, three. Yeah, three. Yeah, three. Yeah, so, two is isolated. Anybody? Anything else? Can we say one is isolated? Uh, no, because they're connected. Yeah. Can we say three is isolated? No. No. Can we say two is isolated? Yes. Can we say one plus three is isolated? Yes. Yes. So the whole idea is when you connect two connectors, then together they will follow the conservation, not individual. Yes. So two will anyway follow, but one and three together will follow the conservation, which is really interesting fact. So the rule remains same. The net charge outer will be half of the system, which is two Q okay. and two Q. That will remain same. Apart from that, you can you cannot say anything. Okay. So the net is uh, given to us two Q and two Q. What is the total charge here? Four. Total is four Q and. Uh, Together they are showing for Q. So what will appear here? So well, net left is zero. So the zero will divide anywhere by in terms of zero only. Yes. So please explain this part again. The total charge is how much? For Q? Yeah. One and three together will conserve all the for Q. Hmm. Already for Q is there. What is left to distribute? Nothing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Means we take one and three whole as one. Yeah, one. Okay. So whenever it. you connect any connector, they become as a one. That's the whole idea. Conductor joined with connector will be acting as one connector because they will have equal potential volume, right? Yes. A connector cannot have two potential, isn't it? Yes. So a connector you can call it as a distinct if it is having distinct potential. So one and three becomes one connector. So to make this question uh, different, we can make it, uh, let's say, uh, two Q here and, and uh, minus Q here. Yeah, that's better. What I'll do is I'll make it minus Q here. Now what will happen? What is the total charge given? Four Q. Again, four Q. Half yes. will be there. Yes. Yeah. But the problem is the total is still cannot conserve because total is 5Q, right? Yeah. Out of 5, 4 is gone. I'm left with only Q. And I have no idea how the Q will be. So I will say this is, let's say, X. On this side, let's say, call X. The, this side, the, here will be how much? Q minus X. Because if you add now all this charge and all this charge, you get the for uh, five, can you check? Yeah. So this is the first part assumption, the X. And once you assume the X, this is minus six. And once this is minus six, this is? Plus six. Plus six minus Q. Uh -oh. Yeah. Basically it is uh, minus Q minus six, which is minus. But that's a opposite phase, right? So anyway, everything, everything is now conserved. You can check everything is conserved. I didn't get one part here. 
Uh, the net charge was 4Q, right? The net for, charge is 4Q for the system, all three systems. Haan. Haan. But and for the so, two, for the one and three, how much is net, net charge? 5Q. Okay. So we have to conserve 5Q, no? Haan. Okay. Got out of 5Q, 4Q is on the outermost surface, right? Yes. So how much left uh, is still left to be distributed? Yes. Q. Out of Q, I have no idea how to begin with. So I'll assume X on this surface. And so Q minus X on the other surface. Is this clear now? Yes, sir. Got yeah. So how many of you have really understood? Yes. Understood. Okay. So what we can do next to find, because we have variable X, then I need one question. So first of all, you have to draw the field. How the field will be look like? How the field will look like? One is from here to here? Yeah. Yes. Another is from uh, here to here. Q minus X. Three, two, two. So you can name it. Uh, let's call it E1. Now, which two connector will have same potential? One and three. Well, so the potential difference between one and three must, must be zero. Yes. Yeah. So how to write it? One minus three. So you can go from one to two and then two to three. Mm. And write the potential. So how we begin is like this. If we write V1. If you're going away uh, along the field, the potential will decrease. Yeah. So minus E1 D1. Because I'm moving this way. Minus E1. Why minus? Because if you are moving along the field, along yes. the field, potential decreases. Okay. Yes. Yes. So V is started at V1. And now we have already achieved the V2. Although I'm not looking for V2, so I'll move further. Yes. But while moving further, I can see E2 is opposing me. Total light. Plus E2 D2. And now I am at V3. This is V3. But uh, V1 equals to V3. Yeah. So what we get is E1 D1 equals to E2 D2. Yeah. And if you now substitute E1 and E2, you will get the X. So can you do it for me? What is the X coming? How much X coming? Please tell me.
हेलो यस इज इट क्यू डी टू हेलो यस इज इट क्यू डी टू अपॉन डी टू माइनस डी वन माइनस आई डाउट माइनस What is e one by the way? We always take the plus, plus. side. E one is how much? X upon. We have to. Oh, uh, maybe I made some. Sorry. E two is q minus x by. Ah yes, yes. Hmm. So x is d one plus. Plus a plus d two. Yes. Is q d two right? X yeah. is. Q d two upon d two plus d one. Yeah. So good effort. So the answer x. We got the x. You can see. So knowing yes. the d one d two, we can find the final charge distribution. Now you can, of course, I chose very bad values. If I take d two as two d and d one as d, uh, this could have been really nice. Okay. Anyway, so the whole idea is for uh, as complex as question like this, you can actually use a scratch method and get the really simple answer. You can find the distribution of charge. Now, this is the first step in uh, cap theta chapter. If you're not doing good with these kind of question, probably you will struggle uh, more than the rest. So, if you want to solve J question with ease, you know need to know the basic. If you see the today this year question also, those who know the formula will get confused because formula will never give you the the right answer. <clears throat> if you know the basic, like what is happening, how it is happening, you can answer it easily. Okay. So before I wrap up today's session, I can give one question. So in case of parallel plate capacitor, if you have a grounding question. And they will ask you as a result of grounding, how much charge will flow through the ground, or flow to the ground. No matter what, if you have any number of plates, if you give let's say five Q and seven uh, Q, and if you have a grounding here with a switch, so we have given the charge. So before the switch is closed, what will be the distribution of charge? You can count it. Seven, five, twelve, six Q and six Q. So minus Q and plus Q. That's it done. Over. Yeah. So this is the distribution before the charge, and you can see the moment you distribute. I mean, sorry, the moment you switch, uh, close the switch. What we know is. The outermost will have zero charge for sure, and the minus q and plus q is anyway pairwise that will appear, right? Yes. Oh no, no, no. my bad. So zero is outside. Now what do we what do we have here? Uh -huh. Five. Five q and and seven q. No minus five. Uh -huh. See, this is now. This is not a isolated. Ha. Uh -huh. Conservation of charge not possible. Ha. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. So we cannot apply the conservation for this case. Yes. Not isolated. So we only apply the conjunction for the isolated one. Now you can see if you the moment to ground, the total charge is always zero. You can check. Yeah. Which means the charge which has flown to the ground is the total charge which you gave in the beginning, isn't it? Yeah. So how much has has gone to the ground? It is actually twelve Q. Total. Total. And that's that's also logical because see earlier it was seven Q, not is minus five Q. So you have gone from seven Q to minus five Q, right? Isn't it? Ah, uh, so yeah, twelve Q charges. So twelve Q so must we have given to the ground. So as a thumb rule, there is no need to calculate the moment to ground. Any conductor or any number of conductor, whether it's one, two, or three, the total charge flown to the ground will be equal to the total charge given in the very beginning. Okay. 
So whenever they ask you how much charge has gone to the ground, the answer is it is always equal to the charge okay. given to the system. System. So yeah. you can uh, write as a note as a result of grounding. total charge given to system before ground. Is this clear? Yeah. I, I hope you all are, you all must be very tired now. If not tired, I can continue for some more time. Or if you want to go for dinner, you can go for dinner. I'll stop the lecture. Okay. So you want to continue? Those who want to continue, raise hand. Oh my God. No one is interested. Okay. So all want to go for the dinner, so we'll stop the lecture now. We'll continue the capture, uh, the parallel pit only uh, for uh, next lecture as well. We'll see a lot of concept of dielectric in detail, how it works, what are the relevant formula. And then we'll come back to the, the capacitor as a circuit. So circuit will start uh, probably after one lecture. So till next lecture, we will not have any circuits. All right, guys, bye, bye, take care. See you in the next lecture. Good night, sir. Thank you.